Edward Hall is a tired man. He could fall dead asleep. Edward's looking for professional help. Rest and a good nap is the last thing he wants. Instead, he'd rather have a handful of pocket pick-me-ups. Edward's got a tall tale to tell about his bizarre imagination, obsession with urban legends, and a fear of pretty women. See why he needs professional help? This is an episode written by Charles Beaumont and directed by Robert Flory. As always, the alternative theories mentioned within may cause anxiety, rage, and disbelief. But that's why you're here, I hope. Kindly consider leaving a like, share, or subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Now let's take a lie down on the couch and begin therapy. It's perchance to dream. Mr. Edward Hall. He's the tiredest man in the world. He hadn't slept in 87 hours. Almost four days and nights. Edward's last hope is visiting a psychiatrist, Dr. Elliot Rathman. Edward stumbles into his office and is shown the couch for rest. But Edward can't rest. He can't stand still. He must stay awake or he will die. After showing questionable signs of making poor life decisions, Edward rambles about himself. He starts describing how his imagination can make paintings of ships come to life. His imagination is so terrifying, urban legends come to life in his head. Edward is also afflicted with a heart condition and is told he must not exercise, climb stairs, or experience any shocks. This is when Edward tells Dr. Rathman he's been dreaming about a spooky amusement park and a seducing carnival dancer trying to scare him to death. Edward recalls his dreams are played out like chapters, one continuing after the next. He meets Maya at the Barker stage. When she's dancing in front of him, Edward gets that awkward feeling and runs off, but that lures Maya to follow and seduce him. He dreamt how Maya wants Edward to walk inside a funhouse. She gets what she wants, after all. She's Maya. The funhouse becomes too much for Edward, and he wakes up with a beating heart. Follow-up dreams have Maya convincing him to take a carnival roller coaster, one of the most dangerous contraptions in the Western world. This terrifies Edward, who really thinks leaping off is safer than staying put. But crazy Maya is taunting him to jump. Back at the doctor's office, Edward lays out the stakes. If he stays awake, the stress will kill him. If he falls asleep, Maya will be there and kill him in his dreams. Ed gives his hearty goodbyes to the doctor, commenting that no one can help him. He steps back out into the lobby and takes another good look at the receptionist. It's Maya. Unable to suffer anymore, he retreats to the doctor's office and doesn't need to open the window to escape. Turns out Edward was lying on the couch all this time. He had been dreaming and dreamt himself to death. Dr. Rathman calls in his receptionist as a witness. She's the spitting image of Maya, but she goes by the name Miss Thomas. Edward had laid back on the couch, made one last scream, and passed away. The doctor aloofly comments about Edward. At least he died peacefully. The first and most obvious theme everyone will think after watching Perchance to Dream is whether the dream world is any less substantive than reality. Edward alludes to this when he says to Rathman, The mind is everything. If you think you've got a pain in your arm and there's no physical reason for it, it hurts just the same, doesn't it? We see two timelines. The first from Dr. Rathman is the real world. The second from Edward's perspective is the dream world. Little more than Serling's opening narration is known outside Edward's dream. Therefore, everything considered true is from Edward's perspective. His childhood stories health, and dreams are taken as canonical. Easy when the episode coerces us to equivocate Edward's dream world versus Dr. Rathman's real one when a dream was the only source of information. Furthermore, Dr. Rathman made one observation that Edward died peacefully but got that wrong. Again, emphasizing the legitimacy of Edward's timeline. But it doesn't quite explain Miss Thomas. If you read The Twilight Zone Companion written by Mark Zickrey, You'll learn the inspiration of the story written by Charles Beaumont was an experience of him running through a funhouse with a wild idea or imagination-fueled hysteria that the ticket taker ran in to follow them carrying a big knife. While I'm sure his heart was racing, there was nothing written about carnival dancers. Serling's opening narration gives no clues into the episode. His closing, however, questions the meaning of reality. He says, 
They say a dream takes only a second or so, and yet in that second a man can live a lifetime. He can suffer and die. And who's to say which is the greater reality, the one we know or the one in dreams? Serling's narration gives no insight into other themes that were revealed either by dialogue or visuals. The marrow of the episode, sort of speaking, is kept simple. Is there a difference how we experience dreams versus the conscious world? However, other clues are either disguised or cleverly hidden in plain sight. This is why we're going to visit some alternative theories. We know three things about Edward Hall. He has a very wild imagination, has episodic nightmares about Maya, and has a bad heart condition, fearful the next dream will kill him. One of the most interesting elements Edward kicked off with, he can make pictures and ideas come to life. It leads us to think this will be an episode about the supernatural. Even the painting gets a prominent close-up. But as he continues, we're unsure if he's speaking literally or in metaphor. The truth behind his powers become more muddled when he tells his next story about fearing someone in the back seat of his car one night. Edward confesses he amped himself up into hysteria, and there was never a mysterious killer hiding there. The only thing real his imagination created was the accident he got himself into. After presenting a pretty attention-grabbing idea, Edward discounts it as hysteria. Maybe Serling would expand on this idea later. Edward moves from what goes inside his head awake to what he dreams when asleep. While he's talking about winning Cupid dolls, staring at cat women, or riding a roller coaster, what he's really doing is minimizing his backstory, justifying how he dreams at night with how he thinks during the day. His opening about making paintings move at will becomes more of an afterthought. By the time Edward talks about his heart condition, the backstory about him daydreaming things to life, it's thrown out the window. Okay, bad choice of words. Edward's vague powers about daydreaming things to life is left behind. Or was it? There was one element that bridged both Edward's dream and Dr. Rathman's real world. That was the receptionist, Ms. Thomas. You will remember in Edward's dream, he sees Ms. Thomas behind her desk, takes her for Maya, and has a very short-lived nervous breakdown. Miss Thomas does look like Maya, just without the makeup and maniacal laughter. Was this some fantastic coincidence? It can't be. In the beginning of the episode, when Edward first walks into the office lobby, he looks over to the not-yet-named receptionist. They make eye contact. He doesn't freak out. That's because it was someone different or different-looking. During Edward's dream, he changed reality somehow. He made Maya in the form of Miss Thomas. Memories, realities, perception were altered. The world changed around him and he passed away. The next alternative theory is going to be one of controversy. It's something I haven't seen mentioned anywhere. No one will admit to it. It's not written down, but it's laid out in front of our eyes. You didn't find me nice to look at? Don't be afraid. You are afraid. Come. It's dark inside. It's soft and cool and dark. You can kiss me now. What if I don't want to? Get away from me. There's nothing to be afraid of. This is the theme of Edward being deathly afraid of all women. Listen, just because the episode was made in 1959 doesn't mean they didn't have ways to work around censors. Edward is 35 years old, single, well-employed, but dreams about running away from attractive women? Maya might be a narcissist sociopath, but if you don't want her attention, don't do this while she's performing for you. Maya is subconsciously Edward's idea of a dream girl. Seductive, playful, encouraging, plans ideas as a couple. Edward is shackled with paralyzing anxieties. This is why, deep down, he needs an assertive woman like Maya. Convince him to do things he feels he can't do on his own. This is exactly what Maya tells him. Now you can do all the things you can't do when you're awake. However, Edward's fear, which exists in the real world, carried over into his dream world. There's an attractive woman in Maya, and he can't escape his attraction in Rathman's lobby either. So, he chooses death. I'm confident this wasn't supposed to be the core theme of Perchance to Dream. I'm sure the production wanted to drive home the dream world versus reality thing, 
use a fun house on the set, and showcase Maya the cat girl in her costume and makeup. But somewhere while writing the story came out themes inspired from some unknown origin. A story about an alluring dancing girl and a man who did everything in his power to escape. I'm torn between judging the episode between what it wants to be, an experimental film with a femme fatale and Freudian subtexts, and what it is, a low-budget storytell pulled off with cosplay and lots of B-roll stock footage. The episode is easy enough to pick apart, and I didn't even cover the more subtle hints, like Dr. Rathman's office is located on the 14th floor, meaning by superstition it is 13 stories high or the clever way it uses shadows to bookmark the chapter between reality and dream. The episode pulls off the carnival sequence as well, considering the limited set design. Maya steals the show, transforming from an object of attention to desire before becoming something more villainous, if that's what you see in her. And I do feel there's inconsistency in the direction of the episode. Sure, we didn't know what Miss Thomas looked like, but Edward sure did. I'm not entirely convinced Edward's imaginary powers were more than flavor text, and his first encounter with Miss Thomas was simply a plot hole hoping the viewers would overlook. I am quite aware of the era the episode was made in, who sponsored it, and the power of the advertiser. But still, here's Edward, who has a serious heart condition, some sort of disease. He can't run, he can't climb stairs, but what does he do? He pulls out a smoke. Guess we can't make tobacco companies look stupid, can we? Anyhow, the episode is worth a watch for its carnival scenes. Suzanne Lloyd, who played Maya, eats up the camera. Ironic, what we leave remembering the episode for is its illusionary dream. If you do watch it, do it for Maya. It's not a bad episode. With its many themes, it could have made a point with, it chose the laziest one. I give it two dimensions out of five. It does have a couple tropes, tag them, Doom from the Start, and Alternate Reality. This is Mr. G of Synergy leaving you with these final words. Whoever said you can't die in dreams never slept in the Twilight Zone. Check out other videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.